Good morning, Center Point. Now that we've run everybody away with the fire alarm or the burglar alarm or whatever it was, now we can all gather back together and have church. We pray those that we did run away will come back and be with us. I'm glad you're here with us today to worship with us. We have a special speaker that I'm looking forward to hearing from. Our lay leader, Judy Pete, is here to, to give us some reflections on the Lord's Prayer. Um, and there are several, several announcements in the um, opportunities page in the bulletin that you've been given. Um, plenty of afternoon reading. Uh, so if you want to take that home and read over it, there's plenty of stuff there. Um, there are two inserts in your bulletin. Today is World Communion Sunday. You'll see this envelope um, that tells you all about what uh, World Communion Sunday is and, and, and what the, off the special offering is for. Um, you can take a look at that. And also this green um, insert is for um, uh, our Hurricane Florence release. I'm sorry, my mind is just all, when an alarm goes off, I've got to reset a little bit. Um, so please give attention to this as well. Um, you'll also notice um, maybe a little bit of color difference in the back of the seat that's in front of you. Um, there's, a, there's a green card there that's, that's for visitor information. If you're a visitor with us this morning for Centerpoint, um, that card is for you. If you'll please fill that out and, um, and place it in the offering plate so that we can um, be in better ministry with you. Um, just please that, let that be your offering today. Um, to fill out that green card if you're a visitor with us today and, and let us know who you are and, and how we can get up with you. Um, I've got a few special announcements of things going on this week. Um, Beth, I want to give you a chance to start with uh, married people tonight. There's a video, if we can get it going. A little short, short, very short video. I don't, think, I don't think this is the right one.
you to be able to come and enjoy that with your spouse. We're, we're providing child care for you. So if you if you've signed up, we'll, we'll have child care available for you um, tonight um, here at the church. That's safe. I promise you it's safe and wonderful. My, my, my little one will be in the child care part so that I can spend time with Amanda. That's what's important to me. So just I just want to remind you of that. Um, also, and last thing I'll mention today is that um, at the end of this month will be our Church has Left the Building endeavor on the October the 28th. Uh, so if you'll keep that in mind, there are plenty of seat, sheets on the Welcome Center out, out the doors here uh, for different projects that we're going to be um, hosting and, and being a part of that day. Uh, we need to know who, who's interested in which project so we can, we can plan appropriately. So over the next couple of weeks, if you'll take a look of those, uh, look over those and, and decide as a family or as an individual which which project you want to be involved in that, that Sunday morning, um, uh, please take a look at that. Um, anything else that I may have missed? Uh, well, if not, let's quick, let's, let's, I don't want to say quickly, let's bow our heads uh, before God this morning. Let's Heavenly Father, through all the alarms and through the noise of life, you have given us this space uh, to worship you, to bring ourselves, all that we are, um, into your presence and to be with you you. Uh, as we think about prayer this morning and specifically the prayer you taught us, we are giving thanks for Judy and for the message that she'll be giving us. I ask that you anoint her and, and, and touch her and speak through her to us this morning. Uh, in your name we pray. Amen. Well, let's stand together and uh, give God praise with a different kind of noise, a good noise, a beautiful noise. No. 
the Savior's love through the storm. He is Lord, Lord of all. Christ alone, cornerstone, weak made strong in the Savior's And just think about, think about those words and just tell, just pour your heart out to him today and just let him know how much you need him. Lord, I come, I confess, bowing here, I find my rest, and without you. Jesus, thank you so much that when we need you, you are there. 
when we are in our lowest places in life, you are there with us. There isn't a place in life, in spirit, in heart, in location that you can't reach us. Thank you, Lord, for that. As we go into this time of offering, I pray, Lord, that you will touch everyone's heart who is here. Give everyone here a peace that will take us through this week and be with us every step of the way in our highs and our lows. And we thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Good morning. How are you? Was that not beautiful? Neva, thank you so much. And praise band. Uh, I don't even know that we need um, a service after that. Uh, the music was just beautiful. And there's the words that we've said this morning in our song, I know praises the Lord. So if you will, just bow your heads with me. Lord Jesus, I just ask that the message today be one that is pleasing to you and that maybe even one little thing that is said might touch the heart of someone here. Uh, you just bless me every day, and I just thank you for the grace and the love that you pour on me, and I just spread that out all over this room. I thank you, Lord. In your name, amen. So as um, we look today at this scripture, it's so familiar, very familiar. And uh, the Lord's Prayer comes in the book of Matthew. And if you happen to have your Bibles with you, it uh, actually comes in 
kind of an odd place, actually, because now my Bible has the red words. Do your Bibles have red words in them? Uh, and as a little girl, I remember thinking, oh, look, look, that's what Jesus said, those red words. And I can remember uh, in Sunday school one time, and these were adult Sunday school class, and one of the guys in my Sunday school class said, I don't have any red words in my Bible. And he was very unhappy. And I don't know whether they just got left out or if it was one of those Bibles that didn't have red words. But we know that those red words are what Jesus said. And uh, in this, we have just gone through the Beatitudes. So we've just had that as part of this um, message that Jesus had. And so in chapter 6, starting in verse, verse 5, it says, And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing to be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room close the door and pray to your father who is unseen. Then your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. And when you pray, do not keep on babbling like pagans, for they think they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your father knows what you need before you ask him. This then is how you pray. So as a child, I learned and memorized the Lord's Prayer. How many of you knew it from the time you were a child? I don't know if it was in confirmation or if it was standing next to my daddy every Sunday because my daddy and I sat on the second pew in church and my mother sang in the choir. And I don't know if daddy just expect me um, to know the words to it. And I think sometimes I really, I'm not sure I really did know all the words or if I said them all correctly, but it was something that I know I learned a long time ago and that I've never forgotten. But I will tell you that I feel like I have often said it rotely and not thinking about the meaning of each word in it. So that's kind of what I wanted to uh, portray today would be, what do those words really mean? So in the beginning, it says, our father. So it's not my father, it's not your father, but it's our father. And he tells us we are heirs to his throne, that we have been adopted into his family. So when we say, our Father, think to yourself how important that is that I'm part of the family of God and what a precious place that is uh, to be. So it says, our Father, who art in heaven. That does not mean that he's not among us because we know that we have, if we have accepted Christ as our Lord and Savior, that the Holy Spirit is still right here with us. So there's never a time that you are not, that you are without God. He is always here. And the scripture that I picked for that uh, would be, this same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. And that was in the first chapter of Acts, verse 11. So we know, yes, he is in heaven, but one day, one day, I will see him face to face. And even the Apostles' Creed, which is another one that we often say very rotely, on the third day, he rose again. He ascended into where? Heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. So much assurance. And when I, when I say our Father, oftentimes I think about the word Daddy. And the familiar word in the Bible is Abba, is the word that is used. 
And I think I have told you before that I often imagine myself sitting on my daddy's lap and what that was like for me as a child and how important that was to me and that I can pray to my heavenly father that same way. So our father who art in heaven, our father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And this really came to me this morning uh, because we should honor our Father's name in heaven. And oftentimes we may hear it taken in vain. Even when we say something like, oh my God, and I think we all have said that before, and I do not think that honors him. And this morning, I was getting ice out of the refrigerator, and a whole bunch kept coming out, and I thought it was going to end up all on the floor. And I didn't say it out loud, because there was nobody but me in the kitchen. But in my head, I'm thinking, oh my gosh. And gosh is a word that's just a, another word for God. And here I was getting ready to do this message today, and I'm saying that in my head. And you know, it doesn't have to be out loud. It doesn't have to be out loud. He knows. He knows every thought in your head before it ever comes out of your mouth. And I did get brave enough one time to say to a coworker, because some people even use some initials with God's name in it, and a coworker had done that. And I did get brave enough to say, you know, I just wish you wouldn't use my Lord's name in vain because it hurts my heart when I hear that. And it really does. And we know this from um, Exodus 27. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain for the Lord will not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. And in Philippians 2, 9 and 11, therefore God elevated him to the place of highest honor and gave him the name above all names. And at that name, one day, every knee will bow, every tongue will confess who he is. And I just think that's so powerful. So every time we say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Keep his name hallow in your heart, in your mind, and on your tongue. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. And sometimes I, I used to think, well, I'm not sure I want to say that because I don't know if I'm really ready for that time when his kingdom comes. But the older I get, the more ready I am. I actually was kind of thinking I wish it would come when my children were in middle school because I just wanted to deliver us literally from middle school. And I often prayed for the rapture, actually, during that time. I even thought about freezing my children and thawing them out later. None of that worked. <laughs> None of that worked. We made it through. Uh, but I, and I get so tickled because my oldest daughter, Kelly, and you've seen a lot of times her three boys who are here, 17, 15, and 13, I think she prays that prayer pretty much every day. Every day. Uh, once they're driving, um, you know, all those kind of things. Max has a little girlfriend now, and uh, she lives in Raleigh. They're in Wilson. He's driving. I'm thinking she's, she's ready for that to be done. Yeah. So when we say, thy kingdom come, John 3, 3, great verse. Jesus replied, very truly. And you know when he says, very truly, you better listen. Anytime you read that in the Bible, or truly, I, truly, I say to you. Listen up. You, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. Oh, my. Oh, my. So there, there's something that has to take place 
in order for us to see the kingdom of God. And I used to be very offended by people who would say they were a born-again Christian. I just have to tell you. Uh, I don't know. I just thought that was maybe they were bragging about something. And it was not until I really knew that's who I was, that I had given my heart to the Lord, and that I literally had been born again, that I was a new person in Jesus Christ, that I accepted that term. And now I very readily would say, I'm a born again Christian and proud of it. Uh, in um, Romans 14, 17, and 18, for the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Because anyone who serves Christ in this way is pleasing to God and receives human approval. So we want his kingdom to come. We do. So our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And this may be the hardest part for me in this prayer. Because, you know, most of the time I want Judy's will to be done. <laughs> what can I say? <laughs> I just kind of want to be in control. Do you ever want to be in control? Ah, yeah. And we sometimes think we're in control, and we really are not. We are never in control. We are not. He is always in control. And I thought during Hurricane Florence how glad I was that he was in control. I was thrilled that he was in control because I really trusted him to calm the storm. And I, I, that was, um, uh, it takes a lot to let go and let God, that, you know, little saying we have, but it really is true. Um, and in um, Psalm 40, uh, verse 8, David, in his um, love for the Lord, said, I desire to do your will, O my God. Your law is within my heart. So can we desire um, to do his will? It's really hard. 1 Thessalonians 5, 18, give thanks in all circumstances. It doesn't say in some circumstances, in a few circumstances. Nah, it says all circumstances. For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. So how do we do that when, like me, you have a daughter who is now divorced? And she is that single mom raising two children, which breaks my heart. Uh, and one of those children is Hayes that has had three surgeries, really four, on his leg at Duke Hospital. How, how do you say, thy will be done when it's a situation like that? When you get a diagnosis of cancer, and I remember when I got that diagnosis of cancer, I'm thinking, uh, not really why me, but more, if I die, I have a, my youngest child at the time was four. And I'm thinking, oh, you know, this, this is really hard. This is really hard. Uh, and I once upon a time was that single mother because my husband left me when uh, I had a five-month-old and a four-year-old. Uh, and Ray is my second husband. And so we can go to this marriage thing tonight, because together we have a whole lot of years of marriage. Um, 38 between just for us, but a lot of other years as well. And I, I just, at that time... Um, Remember how difficult that time was. So I'm hoping that I can be a mentor for my daughter now going through the same thing. She was the one that was five months old when her dad left. So um, just hard times. So 
thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Scary thing to, to say in this prayer. So we have said, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Every good thing comes from God. And there was a time in my life when I would not pray in public uh, at a restaurant. And I did not make my children do that when they were young. And I regret that very much. Uh, But I'm happy to say that I see them doing that now with their own children. And we are, when we are all out as a family, we always hold hands and pray together. And this week, I was working in St. Louis, Missouri, and I had three other consultants with me um, at work and at dinner that night. And I, I don't know exactly where their faith is, but I said, um, I just want to pray for us. And I took their hands. I just immediately held their hands. And do you know what? They just bowed their heads and let me pray. So you'd be surprised (laughs) at what you might be able to do even with your co-workers. And so the next night, um, they told me, yes, you pray again, (laughs) which I did. (laughs) But then the third night, I said, does somebody else want to pray? And one of the other women that I was with did. And she prayed a lovely prayer. So sometimes we just kind of have to do that step out in faith uh, that it's going to be okay to do that. Um, so in John 1, 17, it says, Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. Don't you just love it? that he is the same every day, because I am certainly not the same every day, probably not hour to hour, (laughs) much less every day. That consistency is really important to me, that I serve a God who never changes. His love never fails for me, no matter what I do. Even if I say, oh my gosh, um, he's still going to love me, and I'm glad of that. Also, we have to look back. Every time I think about who God is in my life, I have to remember who he has been for me, how he has brought me through very difficult times in my life. And, you know, when you get into a tough place, sometimes you forget what he's done before. And we must remember who he is and what he's done for me in the past. And when it comes to give us our, this, our day, this daily bread, again, thinking about the manna from heaven, when they're wandering in the desert, their meal was served. Nobody even had to cook it. Would that not be wonderful? Just think, I'm just loving that. It, manna, anytime, anytime. And the feeding of the 5,000. Who knew that those little loaves and fishes would go so far? Um, He does provide. So our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven, give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And don't Ever think that trespass is just a fancy word because it's sin. And that's what that word is. Trespass is sin. I don't think it sounds quite as bad as the word sin. What do you think? Um, Maybe saying I trespass today doesn't sound quite as bad. I don't know. (laughs) But I just think that we got to call it what it is. Call it what it is. And when I look at that... Ephesians 4.32, be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. Now, the part of me being forgiven is a whole lot easier than me forgiving somebody else. 
Is that true? Oh, yeah. Yeah. But sometimes we can't even forgive ourselves. Uh, I think that's really hard to do as well. But I think that part of forgiving somebody else, no matter what they do. And I learned some time ago, I had a coworker that um, was not real nice to me. And I remember thinking, um, I'm going to start praying for her by name. Because if I have to pray for Priscilla, was her name, every day, then maybe I will learn to love her and to forgive her. And I really did. But that's what it took. It took me using her name to the Lord every day. So just remembering that in Ephesians, he says, in him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavished on us. It doesn't even say he gave us grace. He lavished it. Doesn't that sound much much prettier, just awesome to think that he lavishes his grace on us. We do absolutely nothing, nothing to deserve it. Oh, in this last part, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. So we're asking him, please don't keep me from sinning. Please help me every day uh, to stay right. And in Corinthians, no temptation has seized you except what is common to man. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can stand up under it. Pretty good uh, promise there that when we do sin, he will give us a way out. So our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on heaven as it is and on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power of and the glory forever. So in the beginning of this prayer, we talk about his glory and dominion. And we end it with that. And I just love how he, he did that for us. And it's really a very short prayer. And Exodus 15 says, the Lord will reign forever and ever. He is the alpha. He is the omega. He is the beginning and the end. And his kingdom will come and we will know his power and his glory forever. Amen. Thank you, Judy. Possibly the um, one thing that ties prayer together to something else that we do quite often is we pray before our meals, and we often can skip over that one if we're too hungry sometimes um, to do that. Um, but prayer and eating together tend to go well hand in hand for us as Christians. And so today we join at the table along with Christians throughout the world as this is World Communion Sunday. Uh, to remember this gift, and it's all a gift that God has given us. Uh, the Lord be with you. Long ago, Jesus took bread and sat with his disciples, and he took a loaf maybe like this, and he lifted it up to God, and he blessed it, giving God thanks for it. He then broke that bread and shared it with his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Eat this in remembrance of me. And then when the supper was over, he took the cup, he raised it up, gave thanks to God for it, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance 
of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving. And we give ourselves as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ offering for us as we proclaim that great mystery of our faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ that we might be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast together at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And now with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray together that prayer that Jesus taught us with new understanding. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespassed against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. The table is ready. Come as you feel led to feast and dine for the world. If y'all will go ahead and sing when you're done because I've got to run on.
can stand and sing with us on our final song. Lord, the light of your love is shining in the midst of the darkness shining. Jesus, light of the world, shine upon us. Set us free by the truth you now bring us. Shine on me. Shine on me. Shine, Jesus, shine. Jesus, as we leave this place, will you help us to remember your word? Let us pray the prayer that you taught us to pray, but let us pray it with our hearts as well as our minds. And it is in the precious name of Jesus that we say, amen.